yesterday was being on the dive spot. I that that really hit home. That was to see that, and then you know you think of everything when something like happened. You imagine you know what was he thinking when he went in? But you know what the speeds and the way that debris field was. He had to be going so fast that I don't think he suffered at all. Frank Moody became a Tuskegee Airman in February 1944. He was born in Oklahoma in 1921 of Willie and Savannah Moody. Frank had two younger sisters, Flossie and Annie. When Annie grew up in Los Angeles, she got married and had a son, Mr. Eric Bryan. Who's here. Yeah. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first African Americans that were trained to fly aircraft for the United States Army during the Second World War. Prior to the Tuskegee experience, there were a lot of African American men and women in the armed services, but none of them were pilots. The big thing about them is that, you know, they fought for their country and their beliefs and died for their country at a time when that country really didn't believe in that. Eventually, the Tuskegee Airmen would serve overseas in the European theater in North Africa, and a lot of airmen would train in other places around the country outside of Alabama, including here in Michigan. Lieutenant Frank Moody wanted to contribute to the war effort, like millions of other young American men and women. He ultimately became an aviation cadet at Tuskegee, Alabama. He earned his wings there in February 1944, and then he was transferred to Selfridge Field in Michigan for advanced training. In April 1944, he was flying an airplane known as a Bell P-39Q Air Cobra. He was in a flight of four aircraft. They departed Selfridge Field on the lake shore of Lake St. Clair, next to Detroit, and they went up over Lower Lake Huron for aerial gunnery practice. It was Lieutenant Moody's turn to, to practice with his weapons. He discharged his weapons. Something happened to the airplane, and there are different accounts of smoke and fragments coming off the forward portion of the airplane. Because he was so low and going so fast, he didn't have a lot of time to react. The airplane nosedived into Lake Huron, cartwheeled a few times, and disappeared under the water. And unfortunately, Frank Moody was killed in that accident. In 2014, exactly 70 years to the day after the accident, uh, David and his son Drew Lazinski, they are area divers out of Port Huron, they discovered the airplane. They found the wing, they found the door that was disarticulated about 40 feet away from the wing area, and then they began the documentation and the search for other pieces and parts of the aircraft. Um, we went to it, and uh, we were in our smaller boat, he's up in the front. And of course he says, Dad, I think we found the airplane. And I said, no. Yeah, it's an airplane. I can see the wheel, I can see the wing. So I had to run up there real quick and look over, and sure enough, it was, um, it was an airplane wing. They notified me, the state of Michigan's maritime archaeologist, not long after that discovery. And then the following summer, I was able to lead an expedition to sort of reconnoiter the aircraft and kind of see how, what the overall extents are, what the condition is. I began working with other groups, including the National Museum of the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, to actually recover the aircraft, to conserve it, and then to exhibit it. Before you do anything at an archaeological site, you have to thoroughly document it. So that is what happened beginning in 2015, where we really want to know everything about that site before it's disturbed at all. In 2021, we recovered a lot of artifacts, about several hundred. Most of them were pretty small things that were scattered about next to the wing and the engine. But we also brought up a few of the larger things like the guns and the cannon. The extremely large materials, the wings, the engine, the gearbox and propeller, the empennage are still on the lake bottom. The biggest personal accomplishment, I think, from this field season was finding, meeting, and bringing 
Eric Bryant to the site. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, I I know I kind of I got kind of got quiet for a bit, and I started thinking. Yeah, I was thinking all kinds of stuff. Uh, just trying to put myself in his place, and then you ask questions like, you know, you know, did he feel anything? You know, you go through that. Is it? It's just like it was my kid. I think the project is really important to all of us because it really teaches us something that most of us are very unfamiliar about. I really get a lot of satisfaction out of how the project is so directly tied to such an important group of people, and that is the Tuskegee Airmen. They fought for a cause. They didn't fight for anything else. They fought for the dream of the American way. You know, work hard, be true to your country, and you will be successful in it, you know, and you'll be accepted. All of the Tuskegee Airmen and their contribution to the war effort, it was much more than just a bunch of guys that wanted to fly airplanes. These guys were groundbreaking. They were doing stuff. They were shattering that glass ceiling, if you will, to allow people from their heritage, from their culture, from their race, these opportunities, and they really not only did it, but they did it incredibly well. And so they should be honored and they, their stories should be remembered. And that they were part of Michigan's history and Michigan's heritage is something that most of us don't know. And I'm just very honored to be able to help tell that story.